Good morning, students. Myself, Dr. Monika Khetrapal. I am Associate Professor of Physics in Government Dungar College, Bikaner. I welcome you all in the lecture series of MSc Final Physics. I am dealing with fifth paper, that is Condensed Matter Physics. In my previous lectures, we have discussed about superconductivity and an important phenomena, Misner effect. Superconductors are the materials which possess infinite conductivity. That means they have zero resistivity. And the Misner effect, it states that when a superconductor is placed inside magnetic field, then it is found that magnetic flux does not penetrate inside the superconductor. That means value of B is zero inside superconductor. Field lines, they are expelled out from the interior. They are only outside the specimen. Now, in our today's lecture, we are going to discuss important phenomena related to superconductivity. The first phenomena that we will discuss is the critical magnetic field. And next we will discuss about the types of superconductor. So let's begin first of all with the critical magnetic field. What is critical magnetic field? We are placing a superconductor in the external applied field. Then what we are doing, we are varying the value of external field. Then it is found that at a particular value of field, the phenomena of superconductivity is destroyed. That means material changes from superconducting to normal state. This particular value of magnetic field that is needed to destroy superconductivity is called critical magnetic field. And we denote this by HC. And it is found that HC is dependent on temperature. The relation between HC and T is Hc equal to H0, 1 minus T square upon Tc square. Here, what are these, uh, what are the symbols in this expression? As we have said that Hc is the critical magnetic field. H0 denote the critical field at 0 Kelvin. T is the temperature which is below Tc and Tc is the transition temperature. So this is the expression that relates Hc to temperature. Mathematical relation when plotted graphically, that means the graph between <clears throat> Hc and T, this is the graph between Hc and T. At zero Kelvin, we can see the value of Hc is maximum and it is equal to H0. We can also see this from the expression. If we put T to be 0, then we can have Hc to be equal to H0 and this is its maximum value. At T equal to Tc, if we put T to be equal to Tc, we can see that Hc value will be equal to zero. And this is also depicted in the figure. At T equal to Tc, we have Hc to be equal to zero. Because at T equal to Tc, material changes from superconductor to normal state. So no external magnetic field is needed to change its state. Because critical magnetic field is the field that is needed to, 
to change the state from superconducting to normal state. By variation of temperature, we have reached a temperature Tc, which automatically changes the superconducting state to normal state. The graphical representation shows that graph is parabolic in nature. So from here, we can say that superconducting state, it is stable state, but the stability exists for a definite range of magnetic field as well as temperature. What is the value of magnetic field under which it is stable? It is stable under critical magnetic field. And what about temperature? We have seen that below TC, critical temperature, material is superconducting. And above TC, material changes from superconducting state to normal state. So we can say superconductor is stable for a definite range of magnetic field and temperature. And what about the normal state? From here, we can see that above TC, there is a normal state. And we can conclude from here that normal conducting state is more stable at high temperatures and high value of magnetic field. And from the parabolic curve, we can see that under the curve below TC, we have superconducting state and outside the curve, the state of the material is normal state. So below the curve is superconducting and above to the right, we have the material to be in the normal state. So now I am going to discuss another important topic that we will cover today is type first and type second superconductors. Superconductors, they are classified into two types. And sometimes, depending on the behavior in magnetic field, they are classified into three different groups. What are these groups? We will discuss them. So initially, I am going to teach you about type first superconductors. Here, I am taking a superconductor and I am placing it in externally applied magnetic field. Then, in type first superconductors, it is found that Misner effect is completely followed. That means inside the superconductor, B is zero. Complete expulsion of all magnetic field. Such type of materials are termed as type first superconductor. So if we plot graph between M and H, here on y-axis we have M, x-axis we have H. This is the magnetization curve for type first superconductor. Since B is zero, we have relation between B, H and M as B is equal to H plus four pi M. So substituting B to V zero, the curve between H and M, it will be a straight line curve. So this is my curve for type first superconductors. On applying the magnetic field and increasing the magnetic field to HC, the material will lose superconductivity. What is HC? We have taught today. HC is the critical magnetic field. That means the field at which the material loses superconductivity and it becomes normal. So, up till HC, the relation between M and H 
is linear. So below this curve, till HC, the material will be superconducting and above HC, material will behave as normal. And at HC, the magnetic field will penetrate inside the specimen because here the material is in normal state. So the superconductors which exhibit complete exclusion of magnetic field, that means strictly Misner effect is followed. Such type of superconductors are called type first superconductors. These superconductors have low critical magnetic field and examples are pure elements like aluminum, lead, mercury. And from the graph shown, it is clear that this is my graph that if we reverse the value of magnetic field, initially we have increased from zero to HC. This was my curve. But if we decrease magnetic field from HC towards zero, then the graph traces the same path. That means this curve is reversible. Now, I'm going to discuss type second superconductors. Type su second superconductors are the materials which exhibit partial Misner effect. We'll see this from the magnetization curve. Here, this is the magnetization curve for type second superconductor. Magnetization curve means the curve between M and H. It is found that if we increase the value of H, then at a particular value of H, termed as HC1, lower magnetic field, Misner effect is completely followed. That means B is completely excluded from the specimen. Hence, specimen is diamagnetic in this state till HC1. But what happens after HC1? If we further increase the value of magnetic field, then up till HC2, there is a penetration of magnetic field inside the superconductor. That means here Misner effect is not followed. So we have two magnetic fields, two critical magnetic fields for type second superconductors, HC1 and HC2. Lower magnetic field, and upper magnetic field. Between HC1 and HC2, the region is mixed state or we can say vortex state. Below HC1, since B is completely zero, it is superconducting state. And above HC2, since material has transformed to a normal state, and between HC1 and HC2, we have a mixed, that means material will exhibit a mixed phenomena, superconducting, as well as the phenomena of normal state. Now, the examples of these type second superconductors are YBCO, NB3, SN, and from the magnetization curve, we can see that the curve is irreversible. Whereas in type first, the curve was reversible. Now, I'm going to differentiate between type first and type second superconductors. In type first superconductors, Misner effect is totally followed. In type second superconductors, Misner effect is not totally followed. 
for type se for superconductors the graph that is magnetization curve between m and h it is straight line till hc whereas in type second superconductors it is found that till hc1 there is complete exclusion of magnetic field graph is straight line and this after that there is a penetration of magnetic field and it continue till hc2 between hc1 and hc2 vortex state is there and above hc2 we have reached a normal state type first superconductors they are called soft superconductor because they need low value of magnetic field to destroy superconductivity whereas type second superconductors they need high critical magnetic field sc2 value is 100 times of hc1 so they are called as hard superconductor another important difference is that type first superconductors they are not fit for practical applications whereas type second superconductors they are very useful for practical applications another difference between type first and type second super uh, superconductors is for type first superconductors coherence length is large whereas penetration depth is less and these factors for type second superconductors coherence length is small and penetration depth is large so from my today's lecture we have studied about type first and type second superconductors in our today's lecture we have discussed that misner effect is totally followed for type first superconductors whereas for type second superconductors there is a field hc1 up till which misner effect is totally followed then penetration of magnetic field takes place up till hc2 so these were two types of superconductors that we have discussed today in our next lecture we will discuss another important phenomena of superconductivity which is also related to magnetic field that is london equation so we will discuss about the london equation in our next coming lecture thank you students for watching